Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. A unique environment, uh, and I felt like the energy the crowd provided the team, you could really feel it. Um, Coach Mott has got a, man, they've got a good team. They really do. They've got a great offensive team. And for in such a short amount of time to get all these pieces together, I thought their flow and feel and how they play together is really impressive. Um, I felt like rebounding would be a big deal tonight. And I felt like it could be an advantage for us, but ultimately they won the battle on the glass and we didn't play great defensively. We finally settled in, I thought, in the second half and figured out a way to get some stops and then we just couldn't finish it with rebounding. It ended up being the difference in the game. I mean, right there at the end we had chances to grab basketballs and to finish the game off and we couldn't do it. And their their effort, their intensity, their belief, you could tell it just got they're doing a great job. So uh, tip your cap to them. We've got to get better, significantly better, in a short amount of time for Big 12 play. But this will definitely help us get there. And thought it was a great college basketball game. Those uh, some of the comments uh, for uh, Coach Grant McCaslin uh, after the ball game last night as uh, Texas Tech falls uh, to Butler 103 to 295. So it's just uh, it, it. You kind of felt like man, it was just it's kind of just right there, Jamie. It, it, you know, with a couple of minutes to go, even even inside the uh, last uh, minute to play, I mean, you had to you had to get a, a shot there at the end by um, Pop Isaacs to uh, to uh, to you know to tie it and send it to overtime. But you know, they went on a, a they went on like an eleven to two run. I mean, you had a you had a great run there for you know a stretch there of about you know four or five minutes. You know, from the oh, under eight, you know, to about the under four. Uh, but just couldn't. It went from a deficit to a five-point lead at that point. Just yeah. Couldn't, just couldn't hold on at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, and it, I think Coach McCaslin described it perfectly there. Just he had just towards the end there, he had plenty of balls. He just couldn't grab hold of it. A couple of times it was, you know, two Red Raiders fighting over a ball that, got, you know, got bounced out of bounds or whatever. Mm-hmm. Just couldn't come up with those loose balls. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't get the 50-50 balls and – and then you know they they go to the free throw line and they miss two free throws. Then they get the rebound. Then they they put up I don't know two or three or four that, shots. That, that was the time they had, they had four shots at it, and that came after you had just missed two free throws. Yeah, so that was about a minute and a half of pure horror. It was a minute and a half of pure horror. Here's uh, here's one of the things he said to Chris Level after the game on Double T ninety seven three. He said. Um, if this is what we think that that's how we can play defense in the Big 12, then we're going to have a big problem. The biggest thing was our lack of ownership of like, I'm going to defend this guy physically. We got bullied on some of those baskets at the rim. We got bullied on some of those drives. We just have to get those stops. Just physically have to get in between them and the basket and get stops. The biggest thing I'm going to take from this, and I'm going to have to watch film on it to get clearer, but we're going to have to find a deeper rotation at some level. We have to find some other guys if we want to push the ball like this. It looks like we died in the overtime, got fatigued, and then we started settling for threes without getting paint touches. And there's only so many times Joe can drive in there. Pop made a great play to get us to overtime. That drive said a lot, but we settled too much at the end, and that's what I'm taking from it. Yeah, I would agree with it. And, um, you know, Pop made a great drive to get you tied, but he was one of the guys that was definitely settling in overtime. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it, Pop was settling or Pop just has that much confidence in his three-point shot. I can understand why he does, but you know he was one of five on the night. Tucson, one of five, too. I've, I've told you before, I think Joe's a terrific player. I think he shoots too many threes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because... Give me him going to the rim all day long. I'll take it. Love it. Love his toughness, his quickness. His ability to compete at the rim, all of that. Yep, big fan of it. But um, uh, I think he shoots too many. He's I don't know if it's a settling thing or if it's on board going to the basket. So I want to shoot threes, but um, I, I just don't think that's his strong suit. Yeah, Tucson played almost the entire game, forty-two minutes and forty-seven seconds. Isaac, he's a he's a warrior. He is. Man. Isaac's was at uh, forty-one, forty-one. 
and uh, Devin Cambridge uh, was at 33-43. Did you did you think that that was a goaltending call there at the end? I mean, it was it was cl- it was close. Yeah, I felt like it could have gone either way. Yeah, probably it's one of those deals. If you hadn't called it, you probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have had a problem with them not calling it. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't. I didn't feel like he got hosed on the play, but he, his ability to get up there and block shots and uh, and protect things right right around the rim and it's it's impressive how tall uh, how high he can jump. He's, I mean, quite quite honestly, he's a bigger factor in the post than your seven footer is. Yeah, yeah, no, you're 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 not wrong about that. And then Chance McMillan played 36 minutes. He had he had three guys that played over 35 minutes uh, yeah. last night. And I and I bet when Coach McCaslin looks at the film and he's grading guys defensively, I bet Chance isn't going to get one of the higher grades. Yeah. So you've got to figure out a way to, you know, get this talented young man to, you know, just to be a little bit better defensively, mm-hmm. so you can keep him on the floor and you can see him you know, doing the kind of things that he's doing. You don't expect him to go 8 of 10 from 3. Right. I also don't expect him to go 0 of 5 from 2. Yeah, right. <laughs> you are right. allowed to make it inside the line, too. Well, it's, like, it's, like, it's like he short arms every two-point shot. Every yeah. one was short. Yeah. Um, it's like Tucson. You knew, it, it wasn't, you knew it wasn't going in as soon as it left his hand. Yeah. You know, Tucson yeah. went six of, uh, 6 of 8 from 2, and he's 1 of 5 from 3. Yeah. And, and chances opposite of, opposite of that. But, we all have to know our strengths in life, right? I'm I'm yeah. still tr- I'm I'm in still in the discovery stage. Okay. Just discovery yeah. stage of that mm-hmm. of what of what it is that uh that that I bring to this year this year table. Uh entertainment, the, Chuck. Okay. Yeah. Uh fast- Boy, they had some uh they had some really good offensive players though. Really good players. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Telford is a yeah, was, was a talented, talented player. Big, thick, wide-shouldered guy. Yeah, he had twenty six, and then DJ Davis had twenty five, and I mean they had five guys in double figures. Well, and the Red Raiders uh, had had five in double figures as well. Uh, McMillan led you with twenty four, but they had two guys above twenty, and another guy had, had eighteen, and then another guy that had had fourteen. I mean their their guys played a lot of minutes too. I mean they had. They had four guys that played over 35 minutes. So both teams. And the overtime factors into them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. But still, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's still a significant mm-hmm. amount of, it's still a significant amount of time. Um, you know, um, and, and uh, it looked like a great atmosphere as well there at, uh, at Hinkle Field House. So it was, unfortunately, just didn't come out. Didn't come out on your side uh, last night, and that would have been a that would have been a great little resume win. Next action for the Red Raiders will be on December sixth. They'll take on Omaha here in Lubbock. That'll be a seven o'clock tip time, and then and then they're off um, until December twelfth when they take on Oral Roberts. They got to uh, they got to take some tests. Now I wonder. <laughs> I'm not even gonna. <laughs> in in today's collegiate world. Do they even use the do they use the buildings for classrooms anymore? I mean, I'm just I'm being a little facetious there because there's so many online classes. Do they do they have to go in to take the final and just just I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to have a little fun, but I'm. And there's what some about the two of us makes you think we know the answer to this question? <sighs> Neither one of us are going to school right no, now. No, I, I know. I we know. work it's with a, you. You see us every single day, right. all day long. No, you're you're right. You're We're right. not hiding That's an a, education it's process. Probably, behind it's probably you. an unfair comment, but my, my kid has to go to class. Okay, good. Yeah, she has to go into buildings. Into buildings. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Well, they they have them. I mean, they mm-hmm. they should use them. You know, yeah. very nice campus with nice buildings. Yeah, mm-hmm. good heat and everything like that. They take care of. Them they take at care. LCU. Yeah, they yep. at LCU. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad to know that. Um, so anyway, that's that's that. Cowboys won last night. They hung on by the skin of their chinny chin chin uh, to defeat the Seattle Seahawks. It wasn't quite the double digit kind of game that I thought was just going to happen for them but we'll get into we'll get into that this morning plus we'll get into some other uh, college football games the big ones that are going to be taking place uh, this weekend so it is uh, 
It is nice to have you with us this morning. You can weigh in on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. A football Friday presented by Abundance Energy. Great to have you with us here this morning on the Morning Drive. Uh, Dallas Cowboys get a Thursday night win last night. It's uh, it's funny when I was uh, conversing by text with the lucky lady, and she was asking me last night, "Okay, so we don't have anything tonight." I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" So we got. She's like, "Besides basketball," I'm like, "Oh, I said, lucky for you, it's a rare Thursday night doubleheader. We've got Tech basketball game followed by the Cowboys." And she's like, "Woo!" You know, <laughs> I just I don't know I don't know how I could be such a lucky girl, right? But um, <laughs> Cowboys uh, in action last night. They taken on the uh, the Seattle Seahawks, and um, Cowboys get the win, and had to come from behind uh, to to do it. They win forty one to thirty five, move their record to nine and three on the season. The previous home games had all been won by twenty or more points. Um, you know, and some of the level of competition was was obviously different than what you had last night. But man, Geno Smith. 23 of 41, Jamie, 334 yards, three touchdowns. He did throw an interception. It didn't hurt the Seahawks, as it turned out. Uh, but he put on a pretty good performance last night uh, with his effort. Uh, Dak last night was 29 of 41, 299. So the same number of attempts, six more completions for Dak. He did not throw an interception, three touchdowns. Cowboys did go for it on fourth down once and failed. And... Uh, they had they did have a little bit of a struggle early on, but man, CD Lamb, another big night for him. Twelve receptions, 116 yards, and a touchdown. We talked about him yesterday mm-hmm. being one of the best in the league, and he continues to show that. Yeah, no, no, no question. Uh Deron Bland had had an interception. He did he didn't run it back for a touchdown. So like it was like, come on, man. What Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> the best night for Bland, though. No, he, it wasn't. I it mean, wasn't. Metcalf made him look silly a few times mm-hmm. and there's there has to be a little bit of gamble in every defensive back. I mean, because those are the ones that are going to make plays right for you mm-hmm. more times than not. And usually, the ball doesn't come right to them. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I think um, you know it's very similar to um, to Diggs in his great year last year, where mm-hmm. he was uh, you know picking off passes left and right. He was also getting beat left and right, and it looked like. Uh, Deron Bland is kind of cut from the same cloth. Mm -hmm. Cowboys had to settle for field goals four times. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. And and that's been a problem for Dallas all season long. It it has. But it was good to see when the game was on the line late, you were able to get that set. Yeah. Yeah. And and unfortunately for me, I might have, I might have drifted off after the two point conversion. Uh, But (laughs) I woke up and was like, oh, (laughs) game's over. (laughs) I just couldn't. I couldn't hang anymore, man. I, could, I, I, I think this was a classic game of Dallas. Um, I, I don't know if it was looking ahead or or not respecting the Seahawks. I just, I, I just think that there was. Um, I don't know. Looked like a little bit of playing in a fog last night. Yeah, I I think it was more um, the latter of instead of looking ahead. I think it was maybe more maybe lack of respect to the opponent. Yeah, and the Seahawks are okay. They're a yeah. decent football team. So, um, you know, I, if you're a Cowboy fan, I think the Cowboys have been playing at a really high level. I don't mm-hmm. think you should get too down about this one. Mm-hmm. Eh, a little bit of a, you know, when you haven't been as dominant as you have been. Uh, Seattle's probably one of the better teams you've played in this stretch at home. Yes. Um, so, hey, you found a way to win. Don't be disappointed about it. And, and you keep the mo going and eh, get excited for next Sunday night. <laughs> ugly game from a penalty standpoint i mean there were 19 penalties accepted 257 yards in total penalty yardage between the two teams cowboys penalized nine times for 127 seahawks 10 for 130 i mean it was well, just... that's what everybody wants right you want them to be fair oh my god <laughs> you know we, yeah. we, we don't the other team gets thrown 83 penalties and we only had seven how is that fair well every, i know you got 10 and nine. i know I and know. they're almost equal yardage i know i mean everybody was... wins I know it was there were uh, except the people trying to watch except the people trying to oh my gosh yeah I was like and you know Al Michaels uh, there's a flag uh, what what else is new there's a flag what else is new there's a flag what else is new I mean it's, it's, at the 
at the possibility of sounding entirely too much like Chris Need here, what do you want them to do? Yes. Were those penalties committed? Yeah, stop. <laughs> stop. No. I, stop committing penalties. penalties. Yeah, no, I think. Do you not want them to call penalties now? Now we're complaining that they missed the call. Yeah. And I, I knew, I hadn't double checked this because late in the game there hadn't been a punt, but there wasn't a punt in the ball game. So thanks to the texture for reminding me of that. But yeah, no punts in the game. Yeah, but Dallas time. had some key fourth down stops. Yeah. I believe the last three drives for the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some really key ones. So when they when they needed to go, but you know the disturbing thing for Dallas was you were in the red zone eight times and you converted with touchdowns four times. You'd like that percentage to be better, but yeah. obviously you scored forty one points. Right. So it's hard to it's hard to it's, it's hard to complain about your yes, offense yes, in any way, shape, right, or form. Right. 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 But I mean, you could have blown you could have blown them out and not made it a not made it a game. But at any rate, you're you're right. You can't can't complain. The Seahawks were four or five and. In, uh, inside the red zone, but although it, it, well, I don't think the Cowboys' defense played great either. No, I don't. They I had agree. a. I can't say that they had a bad game, like overall, with the amount of stops that they got when they needed the stops. Just um, it, yeah, they gave up thirty-five at home. I, I wouldn't say it's a great day. I wouldn't say it's the worst ever. Yeah, it. it I you could almost Again, make they the got ar- some key stops when they needed to. You could make the argument that this is these were two balanced teams for one another for how they played last night. Yeah, based on the Cowboys not hearing playing their best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when 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 they needed to on uh on fourth and one, uh this was the first stop. Uh, DeMarcus Lawrence uh gets a gets a big stop with when Seattle's at the Dallas 46 and you know so th- like you said, I mean that was the end of a 10 play drive. So I mean they were kind of rolling their next Time that they were stopped on downs was after was was five plays and stopped and then five plays and stopped. So, like you said, the last the last three drives, you know, you really stiffened up mm-hmm. and and got off the were able to get off the field. Um, so that was that was really good for the Cowboys. So they they moved to nine and three on the season, and uh, you know, off, obviously uh, headed for a playoff spot and trying to maybe just see how good you can get. And up next for them will be the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. That'll be a, a Sunday night game a week from Sunday. So the Cowboys have a little bit of time to get themselves rested up a little bit, get some uh, maybe some dings away from them, and uh, they'll take on the Philadelphia Eagles. And then uh, they'll have a massive advantage with some extra days compared to the Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm about massive, but a little bit of an advantage. I was right? being sarcastic. Oh, I know you were. I know. I know. <laughs> But that's that's okay. But they will. They get uh, get get a chance to kind I of do, stretch I mean, their I legs. Do, I do think it's an advantage. Yeah, it is. I don't know about massive. You just have yeah. to play better than the other team. But yeah. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. This is Football Friday, presented by Abundance Energy. Uh, there's one school kind of winding down. That's kind of sad. It is winding down, and then it'll be a basketball Friday. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good news. <laughs> that'll be a basketball. It'll be a basketball Friday. Pretty oh. pretty soon here. Will it be a baseball Friday too? Oh, I'll, I'll try to make that happen. Oh, oh come on, abundance energy. <laughs> I'll, I'll try Wait to make a minute. It. Was this, so baseball wasn't part of your consideration. When... It my my my. It goes through. It. <laughs> oh, yes. I, you know, yes. I, very good point. <laughs> Let's turn this on, Chuck. <laughs> I'll make that. I'll make that. It's not on abundance energy. It's so, uh, Chuck it's didn't my fault. talk it's them into it. I know. I know what it is. Got, I know. We have not wait, gotten to that point yet. Okay? I know why it is. We have not gotten to that point. I yet. I know what happened, Jamie. Chuck mm. goes to football games every Saturday. Oh my God! Here Chuck we goes go. to basketball games every women's game mm. and every men's game that he can. When we get back to the playoffs, then he'll <laughs> then it will be abundance Fridays for the Red Raider baseball team. <laughs> I'll see if I can make that happen. Uh, but hey, there's still one school playing in uh, at the high school level here in Lubbock. Lubbock Christian will take on Dallas First Baptist for the state championship. This is Taps Division Four, and that will take place uh, tomorrow in Waco. Tomorrow night, uh, Eagles are 11 and two. Dallas First Baptist is 13 and 0. So that seems like a uh, a bit of a task there. But hey, good for them that they're that sure. they're still that they're still playing, right? Sure. So absolutely. Good luck to the good luck to Lubbock Christian tomorrow. As they, I wonder why they're playing that game at night. It seems it seems like perfect for a two o'clock kick. But who knows? Maybe that stadium's being used for prime time. Okay, prime time. All right. Prime time. 
maybe so. I, sometimes I think of the parents more than I think of the kids going, hey, you know, that that mom's <laughs> freezing her tail off there in that metal bleacher. And she's happy to do it, but it's like be a lot more comfortable for it at two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you know, and it's good that you're thinking of the parents. Yeah, just thinking of just thinking of the thinking of the parents. It's uh, it's crazy how much as I've you know I'm now and this is my eleventh year to be part of the Lady Raiders, and it's amazing how much younger the parents are starting to look now. <laughs> Even at the college level, I mean the the high school parents look like teenagers to me, and now the college parents are looking like well, you guys are looking awful young. <laughs> I'm not sure what that says for you, Chuck. It says I'm just getting a little bit, just getting a little bit older. You know, that's uh, uh, I I do not hate baseball someone says this it is sad that the home for the world champion texas rangers a big 12 powerhouse red raider baseball team has someone that hates baseball love you Mm. chuck i do not hate baseball actually very sad i actually have a a deep passion for baseball but it doesn't uh i I just there's the spring is hard for me and getting out to the ballpark just because i've got so much stuff coming up and uh, going on think of all the spring football he has to watch yeah, I, I did. the XFL and the Canadian I, I watched, League. I watched, none, I watched I watched none of that. We know we know that I don't care at all at all about at all about that. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Seven eighteen this morning here on the morning drive. Take your thoughts, comments. Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double t ninety seven three dot com for that of the mobile app. Um, okay, so college basketball last night elsewhere. Uh, Texas beat Texas State seventy seven fifty eight. Oklahoma over Pine Bluff, 107 to 86. And then Creighton, number 15, wins over Oklahoma State on the road in a Big East, Big 12 battle, 79 65. It's still hard to think of Creighton as part of the Big East. Really? I don't know. What do you picture them as? Some mid major, you know. But I mean, they've been a very good basketball program. They've been a really good basketball program. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. How long have they been in the Big East? It feels like they've been there a while. I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to Google that. Uh, yeah, and, and it feels like they fit there. Okay. Uh, tonight in the Big East Big 12 battle, uh, number six, Houston, will play at Xavier. Uh, Xavier's four and three. St. John's and West Virginia play. Because I, when I think of the Big East, I think of St. John's, Georgetown, Seton Hall. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I think of. <laughs> Um, that should be that should be a pretty good game. Uh, St. John's is favored by five and a half, and that's Rick Patino's team. Okay, that would have been mm-hmm. they probably made that match up because of uh, Patino and Huggins, but you know Huggins yeah. uh, took care of that. A little disappointed. Iowa you State, know, Syracuse, and UConn didn't get mentioned in that mix there. When you think of the Big East, yes, right, yeah. right. That's that's two other teams that Pitt. Right, kind of just stand out at you. Iowa State and DePaul will play tonight in Chicago. Uh, UConn plays at Kansas tonight. Uh, UConn is four, Kansas is five. And then Fresno State plays at BYU. BYU is uh, ranked 19th, and they're 6-0, and and they're favored by four and a half. This is not a Big East Big 12 battle tonight. That That's the one game that's not a Big East Big 12 battle. So that's kind of gets you up to speed on what's going on. Then there's... More games uh, tomorrow in the Big East Big 12 matchup. Is the Big East Big 12, is that, do you think that has a better, I know the timing of the year is much better. So I, I think it's much better for this to be done in December. But do you think the matchups are better than the SEC Big 12 challenge? Um, yeah, I, I, th- I think they're good. It just kind of depends on the year because there, there have been some good ones in the in the Big 12 SEC challenge as well. But we always um, think of the SEC as being top-heavy with yeah, Kentucky. Yeah, that's totally and, fair. Totally and, fair. And right now, I mean, the Big 12 is thought of as the best conference in college basketball, and the mm-hmm. Big East is thought as the second one. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, again, when you look at teams like, you know, whether it's Creighton or or even, you know, Butler or, you know, um, St. John's, would, I mean, Patina will get them back. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then UConn, obviously. So mm-hmm. and I just feel I just think the Big East, big the Big East, to me is a, is better than the SEC, just in terms of top to bottom. Not necessarily that because Kentucky's always going to be they're Kentucky for God's sake. 
seven twenty one this morning here on the morning drive. Hey, I've got a I've, I've got an interesting number for you. Would you like it for uh, the women's game tonight for Tech and uh, Houston Christian? It doesn't involve Houston Christian; it involves the Lady Raiders. Okay. Oh, and so I was, I was I was looking at this last night because the Lady Raiders are eight zero in the season, and they've won five single digit games this year. Okay. Okay. So all of last year, they went 20 and 15. Do you want to know how many single-digit games they won last year? None. That's 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 incorrect. Okay, I would take a shot. <laughs> it's a good guess. <laughs> Two. Five. Oh, okay. Five, five all of last year, and you've won five already this year. You lost four. You went five and four in single-digit games last year. So there you go. Just a little... little Basketball conversation tidbit for today. Okay, seven twenty-three this morning here on the morning drive. Here, here, here is the conversation starter because this will be the start. This will be the weekend that Christmas parties will start. Uh, I don't have any Christmas parties to go to uh, this weekend, but mm. I know disappointing. Somebody's, sounds like somebody's looking for an mm-hmm. invite. No, not really. I don't know of any big parties. So uh, anyway, here's a uh, conversation. Your little party won't be good enough for me. <laughs> has to be a big party if you want to invite okay. Chuck. Okay, what if it's a party of like five, but it's like Kirby. Yeah, they're all <laughs> important <laughs> people. Right. All that, rich that's people. That's a small party. Yeah. But that's a big party. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, that, that would be big. Here, yeah. here's, here's my conversation started. So you're familiar with the you're familiar with the show Married with Children, right? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, married with children, Al Bundy and the whole deal. Okay, so the, the whole o- group, yeah. The opening scene is there's the water fountains in Chicago, and then there's there's the freeway that goes by. They took the same footage from the the Christmas movie, vac- not the Christmas movie vacation, but the the movie vacation with Chevy Chase. If you look at the opening of Married with Children, you'll see the truckster going across the interstate there it's the it's the same stock footage that they used for um the movie vacation and uh the tv show married with children so there you go there i go there's a little conversation starter if you're if you're looking for one mm-hmm. for this weekend's christmas party now i just gotta figure out how to work that I into thought, a conversation i thought we had a rule though that if he gave us a conversation starter he had to give us a conversation ender that might well. be that too <laughs> maybe they might go hey this wackadoodle over here is talking about married with children some show that hadn't been on for 20 years man <clears> i <throat> feel like um christmas vacation has already been on a thousand it times. has been on a thousand times right this is the morning drive podcast from double t 97.3 Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time now for Jamie's question of the day. Brought to you by someone not named Jamie. I think a lot of times people listen to us and probably feel like that show theme song fits us. Because we sound like a yeah. argue, arguing husband and wife. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I appreciate Jeff putting that uh, clip from uh, Married with Children and uh, the movie Vacation on uh, the Yates Flooring Center chat line. And that I was right. <laughs> I was yeah. Right. Chuck was right. <laughs> if we didn't tell me I'm wrong, we can't tell Chuck he was wrong. Yeah. Chuck was right. Tell me I'm right, man. Tell me I'm right. Um. So, yeah, question not from Jamie today. And it is a football Friday. So I will ask a football question. All right. We just saw the Dallas Cowboys beat the Seattle Seahawks last night, prime time on prime video, as the case may be, or listen to it here on Double T 97.3 and 100.7 the score. Cowboys, nine wins on the year. Mm -hmm. There's only one team that has more. They're in your division with the Eagles being 10. So my question is, are the Dallas Cowboys legitimate Super Bowl contenders and why it would be hard to call them not um i think if you did the if you covered up their logo and and said this team is x nine and three on the season they've got a dominant edge rusher and micah parsons They've got a quarterback that appears to be playing very, very well. They um, they don't shoot themselves in the foot uh, a great deal. They, they do have a problem scoring in the red zone. But when you look at, if you just did the blind resume, 
I think you'd have to say, yes, this team is a Super Bowl contender, knowing that maybe your biggest obstacle is right there in front of you in the Philadelphia Eagles. Do you think Dallas is going to win the division? No. I don't either. <clears throat> to be a Super Bowl um, contender, you're going to have to win back-to-back weeks probably at San Francisco and at Philadelphia. I don't think the Cowboys are doing that. I think they're a good team. Mm-hmm. I do. I do. I think they're good. I just think those two teams are better. And Dallas is going to be playing at their place. You would expect. Unless they find a way to somehow clip the Eagles and take the division. And they've gotten no help in that regard the last few weeks when everyone was looking at this stretch for the Eagles schedule yeah. and going, bl- yeah. this is where a loss could happen. You could I blame the Chiefs. Game yeah. Uh, the, the, Buffalo's well. supposed to lose to Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, certainly the Chiefs had. I mean, they they had their opportunities. I mean, they didn't score in the second half. I mean, the Eagles were the better team, and maybe the better may be the better team. Maybe they're the best team in football right now. <clears throat> I think the number hard to disagree with you on that on yeah, what you no, just said, uh, Jamie. When you like, like <laughs> well, I just I, th- I think it's gonna be really hard to mm-hmm. win at San Francisco and at Philadelphia back to back weeks. When when you look at like Chuck said, if you were to cover up the logos. And just show this is what this team has done this year. Yeah, but what have they done against well, good teams? They hey, played the Eagles I'm, really I'm, well, and they. I'm that, getting to that. Yeah, but I'm getting to that. That they've got seven double digit wins, which is tied for the most with I think it's San Francisco also has seven. And how many of those are above five hundred? Yeah, not. I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> Let me make my point here. But I keep looking back and I keep thinking about this season. Yes, Super Bowl contenders blow out teams they're supposed to blow out. Fair. And yes, Super Bowl winning teams win at home, which is what the Cowboys have been doing. They have been taking care of business in Arlington. You don't get a a 13, 14 game win streak at home without taking care of business there. And I think they're a good team. But what don't Super Bowl champions do? They don't lose to a team who's trying to lose in the Cardinals. You don't lose to a division opponent that you know you have to beat in order to win the division. And you don't lose to the 49ers, who are the other team that you're going to have to beat in the NFC Championship game if it goes that far. And in the new way that the playoffs are set up, where there's only one bye, you're facing one of those two teams at that point on a bye. That's going to stop them from getting that far. Here, here's what you can say: of all the teams that are in second place, the Cowboys are probably are the only team that could threaten to get into the Super Bowl. Because if you look at just start with the AFC, Buffalo's in second place, six and six; Pittsburgh, seven and four; Indianapolis, six and five; Denver, six and five. You don't feel like any of those teams, if they get into the playoffs, are going to advance past the second round. Then you look at the NFC. You have Minnesota six and six, New Orleans five and six, Seattle six and six, Cowboys are nine and three. Of all those teams, the only team that you would say on the NFC side that would get past the second round is Dallas. Mm-hmm. I would so, agree with you. So, uh, so take out the. You know, if you if you consider they're the only Super Bowl contender that is not going to win a division. If you said it that way, you could you could say it. But I mean, but then you look at the daunting task of what Jamie just talked about: going to San Francisco, one end of the country; going to Philadelphia the next week, the other end of the country. Um, not you know thinking about even who they're playing and the 49ers, who they got. But you know, maybe a benefit for them to play the 49ers because. They got embarrassed so bad, and I don't. Mm-hmm. I feel like the 49ers have kind of regressed since then, and that the Cowboys they've, have progressed they've been a little bag, banged up. Yeah, but but I think that Cowboys are are better than what they were when they played the 49ers, and maybe the 49ers that was the best that they're going to play because they just they beat the Jesus out of them. Now the the question then becomes is could you go into Philadelphia and win? Well, you were you were right there, were right there. Yeah, you were right there. But then having to do that in back-to-back weeks, is, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. 
<clears throat> Seven. Sunday night next week. Very important for the Dallas Cowboys. Very important. No question. I mean, you can give up on the division if you lose next Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. But you are going to need some help from somebody. And maybe your best help has already failed you. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Five, it is a football Friday presented by Abundance Energy. We come to you this morning from the First United Bank studio and look forward to hearing from you today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double dot com for that of the mobile app. Visual Edge IT hotline is open 806-771-0973. So it's, it's championship weekend in college football. We have a huge game tonight uh, between Oregon and Washington. The winner, I believe... I think you're right. Goes to the college football playoff. Yeah, I think you can be pretty confident. Yeah. Uh, this will be a game that you'll hear on uh, Double T 97.3, uh, beginning at 6 o'clock tonight. And the kick is uh, a little after 7. Oregon is favored by 10. Uh, Which yep. is really weird yeah. since Washington won the first game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have not seen Washington play, so I can't sit, sit here and pontificate that they're the stronger team, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're, they are undefeated. I think I am I am going to root for Washington tonight. Um, I probably should root for Oregon because you came pretty close to beating them. I, but I, I, for whatever reason, I've always kind of liked the Huskies. I think just to make it cleaner for me, mm-hmm. in my mind, mm-hmm. like I want Washington to win because it's sort of like, like okay, if they if Oregon now wins – and it's one win for each of them. It's like, oh man, Washington got hosed just because they're late. Their their loss came later, but they're one and one against each other. Yeah, yeah. So if Washington wins, then it's like, okay, they definitely deserve to be there over Oregon. They beat them twice. Yeah, uh, the quarterback matchup could be interesting tonight. Bo Nix has thrown for thirty nine hundred and six yards, thirty seven touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, Michael Penix for. Uh, the Huskies, he's thrown for 3,899 yards, 32 touchdowns, but eight interceptions. Yeah, I think they're both really good. And so, you know, this... That should be an entertaining game. I they're would think fun, so. Fun mm-hmm. teams to watch. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, Oregon does have a 1,000-yard rusher, okay? Uh, he has... Uh, Bucky Irving has uh, rushed for 1,043 yards, and then the uh, the Washington guys right right behind him, Dylan Johnson, he's rushed for 961 yards. So, yeah, I think it's... I think it could be a, uh, I think it'd be a very entertaining ball game tonight, eleven and one and twelve and zero. I'm rooting against Liberty tonight. Um, I, I just. What do you got against Lucas? Well, first of all, I didn't know is he a Liberty grad? I don't know if he graduated from there, but that's where he was an athlete. At Liberty? Yeah, isn't it Liberty where he was at? I think that was where he was at. I, I mean, he, I know he's an Oriole fan, but I didn't realize yeah, he was a Liberty I fan. I don't think he played at Liberty. What would he have possibly played? Lucas I mean, Lucas played college basketball. Don't you know that? <laughs> we he found really? his page. Yes, he did. Like he really did, but it's not. I don't. It's not a division. <laughs> like at Jeff Winston State or someplace <laughs> like that. Hey, which college basketball <laughs> team did you play for, Heinz? I didn't even try. I think it, it was a D three school, but who cares? I mean, I have you played college sports? No, I did. I didn't play any college sports. <laughs> I didn't play any college sports. So um, I don't. I just don't like Liberty. I don't like Liberty because of Jerry Falwell. I thought, I thought he was always a hypocrite. Um, <laughs> and um, I, I'm always highly, highly, highly suspicious of those that think they're holier than thou. And I always feel like that. The, and then they also got Hugh Freeze there, which I think is fascinating that. The only job that he could get was at a pseudo religious school, and he was like a absolute crook, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I find that I find that I guess they they're allowing him to repent there, what right? Was, what was from the desk of Choice Woodman? He didn't uh, play at Liberty. He got his degree from there. Okay. Okay. Well, who what, what, got against Liberty? What was Hugh Freeze's infractions? What were they recruiting? He, were they? I, I think he was. Uh, I think he was. Didn't it have something to do with the strip club. Uh, it used to. Well, I think he's using his cell phone and uh, procuring not recruits. <laughs> he was recruiting. He was recruiting for himself as opposed to his his ball club. I think it was part of his problem. 
I think he was recruiting other people. <laughs> he was recruiting. <laughs> I think he was, and he was, and he was paying them. I mean, it was, he was paying them. What was my? <laughs> he was paying them. So I'm rooting for no. I'm, I'm rooting for New Mexico State. I'm rooting for Jerry Kill. Although I kind of feel like he's kind of had a. Uh, I don't know. He's kind of been different, different deals. <laughs> somebody, somebody said he was calling hookers, right? Yeah, he was calling hookers, right? I think that's what he was doing. He was trying to procure them and recruit them, and maybe he just he wasn't very good at that. I don't know. Anyway, he's got a good football team, but I I want to see them drop out of the top twenty five because I just I don't want them to mess up anything kind of bowl related or for them to go. Oh, we're national champions! You know, I don't want to hear that out of Liberty because they went twelve and thirteen to zero, and they hey, we should be in the college football playoff, man, because we went thirteen and zero. Mm. Well, who did you play? Okay. Uh, then tomorrow, and we'll have this game for you on 100.7, the score. I hate, I hate, I think, I think it's wrong. I hate, I just hate it. I would, I would love for Texas Tech to be in the Big 12 championship game, but I hate these 11 o'clock games, especially, and I understand why you have to have it because you're trying to get four games in. I just feel like the Big 12 championship game is better than the ACC championship game and that the Big 12 deserves to play later in the day. Then, the reason the Big 11, 12 is at 11 is because the TV guys want you to watch and I know. stay on their channel. I know. but I just, So you put your good game first now. I know. As a, 11 a.m. doesn't mean what it used to. As a fan, as a fan, <clears throat> I would prefer it to be an afternoon game or a night game. I would tell you I think the ACC championship game is going to be more entertaining than the Big 12 championship game. Okay. Except uh, for the Nelly part. You are you are you all in on the halftime show for the Big Twelve? He's gonna uh, be on a mountain. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. I would be. I mean, okay. I like Nelly, so okay. and I see that the bands are playing with him. The the Oklahoma State and the Texas bands are playing with him. Chuck, do you have a favorite song of Nelly that you want him to play? Mm, I'd have to again. I'm not a song and title guy. Okay, the, here's a lyric that you have to be able to get. Okay, okay it me. is right up your alley. Try, okay, try you me. have to try me. I feel like the pressure's on. It's getting hot in here. What's the next line? This is right up your alley. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Let's get out of here. I don't know. What is it? <laughs> I feel like I failed you terribly. So take off all your clothes. No, so take off all your clothes. Yeah. It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. I can get into that. Yeah. <laughs> I told you it was right up your alley. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer Air Force Ones, but okay. much better song. We'll get into a little bit more of this. Uh, Oklahoma State and Texas play tomorrow at 11. I'm I'm rooting for the Cowboys in this game. I have just ruined everybody's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yates Flooring Center Challenge. Can we please hear Chuck being national champs from Liberty? <laughs> Wheels have fallen off again. Goodness, Chucky Mike. If you're going to call me Chucky Mike, just spell it right. C-H-U-C-K-I-E, Mike. Man, of course I'm back, Chuck. Uh, oh, Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.